today we're going to talk about what not to do. We're going to do a list. I have a list of, I thought it'd be 10 and then I was like, okay, a dozen, well, maybe 20. And then I ended up with 22 and I thought, let's just round it up. So we're going to do 25 things to mistakes to not make on your first time in Paris. And this will include planning for Paris and being in Paris. So let's jump in. I have some notes, but I'm going to kind of just do this off the top of my head. So we might jump around in the chronology of the packing, getting there and all the things. So the main thing, first of all, if, you, if you're going to Paris, for a lot of people, it's a once in a lifetime trip. And our first time we went to Paris, we thought it was a once in a lifetime trip. So we tried to cram in like we have to see all the things because we may never come back. We have to see, we have to see this and this and this. We can't miss that. We can't do, we have to do all the like highlights tour of Paris and you kind of know, everyone knows kind of what the highlights are. And so we did do it. I'm working on an itinerary for that right now on our first week, um, what to do your first week. But there are some things that we learn to um, avoid or leave out or not worry about, even though it might be the only time you go to Paris. So the first thing is to don't make your trip someone else's bucket list like there's all the instagram worthy places to go and take a picture and see the of course see the apple tower and but there there's a lot to see in paris that doesn't necessarily have to be on that bucket list although there are places i would highly recommend you don't miss like the louvre and the eiffel tower of course and but don't make it someone else's trip take the trip that you want to take and attached to that is don't overdo the itinerary don't we cram in a lot and we hit, you'll see when i do the itinerary video when it's done i'll put a link somewhere up appear in a, a, t a card you can see the link and you can see what we did and the pace we set for ourselves and it was um most people would think it's kind of intense but we did it and we had a blast and we crammed it all in and we did end up being able to come back so we've seen more things since then but don't overdo your itinerary um don't pack too many things into one day for example <laughs> one day we it ended up we we changed our itinerary as we went so kind of on the fly because we're flexible that way but we ended up going to the military museum, which has about 500,000 things in it to see. Overwhelming, gigantic, amazing. Took a nap and then went back and saw the Louvre for our first time. Um, feet tired, eyeballs tired, like information overload. And so we kind of went through the Louvre with sort of no plan, which is another thing to not do. Don't go through the Louvre without a plan. Um, and the other thing to do that is bring comfortable shoes just bring don't do not pack heels just don't even bother packing heels if you've seen the streets there the, there's stairs and streets even in tennis shoes even in your most comfortable tennis shoes you'll probably be walking 10 miles a day minimum so bring walking shoes they don't need to be ugly like those ugly shoes need to just someone needs to just make those illegal but bring cute comfortable walking shoes and tied to the packing shoes is packing in general don't overpack and i have talked about this a lot go try to go carry on only you will never be sorry but don't overpack plan to wash some clothes along the way plan to rewear some things plan a really cautious careful capsule wardrobe that can go everything goes with each other you can mix in some um, accessories and make it work but pack light because you will be taking buses, trains, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles. You will make it a lot easier if you just pack light. Don't overpack. And that kind of morphs into don't overpack because you may be dragging your big luggage onto a bus, onto a metro. Any of those things with big luggage? Mm -mm. No, don't do it. Don't do it. I can't, I can't imagine. We did the metro with our little carry-ons and even that was like, sorry, 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 we're in your way. One thing we learned that was not obvious about using the metro when you do learn the end points of the line you're using where your stop is along the way but we had to figure out that you're going in the direction of the end point not necessarily your stop so it always felt like we were doing it wrong so make sure that you learn the end points of the line you're using because that will be the direction that you need to take and there are two sides of the track so make sure that you're on the right side going the right direction but don't avoid the metro is the other thing don't not take there's two things with the metro don't avoid it like don't be afraid of it it's not hard although you will get lost but don't also don't take it to the exclusion of walking everywhere and seeing the beautiful city that is above ground because when you get everywhere on the metro which we did our first trip we only used the metro to get everywhere we didn't take any taxis and we we walked some but not nearly as much as we did in in subsequent trips if you take the metro you get everywhere it's great it's convenient but you've missed all the architecture and the beautiful sights to see when you just walk around this city but if you take luggage on the metro 
forget about it. Like you're going to go through the turnstiles if you've seen them. They're small. Even with a small bag, you're you're navigating through a little door that opens and you get through it. With a big bag, I don't even know how you could do it. And then once you're inside or outside the turnstiles, the metros are full of stairs. And I don't think, I may be wrong because I haven't done all of them and there are hundreds, but there are few if no elevators on in the metro system. It's lots of stairs, many flights of stairs up and then across and then back down to the metro platforms. Just don't drag bags on the metro if you can at all avoid it. And same thing with buses, like it's in trains, it's just going to be easier to get on with your little carry on, keep it tight, keep it close. And also you're not separated from your luggage or you can become a target, which morphs into don't be a target ever. Don't backpacks like pack light. Yes, but don't bring a backpack backpacks. You might as well wear a sign that says I am a tourist. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Just don't bring a back backpacks. There's so many other bags if you need to carry things around, which I don't. I bring a little, you've seen it in my packing videos. It's a little crossbody bag. It holds my phone, my ID, some money, Metro card. That's it. I don't know why you need the big bag over your shoulder. It's just, if you notice the people that are pickpockets that are out at the outside and at the on the platforms of all the metros and all these touristy places, they're watching the bags. You can watch them watch the targets. My, like my husband will do it and he's like, that guy's watching bags. He, they'll be standing, they'll just be kind of loitering nearby, but you can see every woman or anybody who walks by with a bag, you can see them just tracking the bag. Like, is it open? Is it accessible? And if backpacks get cut open from behind. And I've heard massive numbers of people that had the oh, backpack and you get home and it's got 25 cuts in it where people tried to get into it from behind and get up in and take your stuff from behind while well, you don't even know what's going on. Leave the backpack in your room or somewhere. Don't bring it. Bring it. And my, my crossbody actually fits under whatever I'm wearing as an outer layer. Like I'll always wear like some kind of a little light jacket or a blazer and it can go under it. So when that is sort of buttoned up or zipped up or kind of closed, your hands are free and you have nothing that someone can get in or try to get to at all. I mean, they'd have, you'd have to know them really well if they're going to get in that bag. Like, no, not happening. So don't be a target. Don't, don't keep your stuff outside. Don't also being a target. The other thing to skip, I don't know what it is with the videos lately and, and maybe it's not just lately, but that the expensive tourist look, how to look quietly expensive and quiet luxury. I get it. But when I am a tourist, the last thing I want to look like is expensive. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> That's like also wearing a sign that says I'm a tourist and I probably have a lot of money because I'm wearing, you know, I'm wearing expensive things, I'm carrying an expensive bag, I'm wearing expensive jewelry. Like, first of all, the French women that I noticed in all the times I've been there in general, very minimal jewelry. They are not blingy. There's no big jewelry. There's no big hair. There's no big, no fake nails, no fake eyelashes, not a lot of makeup. If you, when I'm there, I don't want to look like, I don't want to look expensive. I want to look like Joe regular French person, which is blend in, neutralize the vibe a little, like still be you, but tone it way down if that's what your vibe is <laughs> and drop the look expensive thing. I don't, I don't get that. Don't, I don't want to look expensive when I'm traveling at all. Just, I want to look invisible. So that's another thing to avoid. Just go, if you, if you've ever wanted to just go a lot more natural, France and even Paris is the place to do it. They are not dressed like fashion week when you get there. The, all the movies that show all the French people like accidentally super chic on the street, they are, but it's in a very, like a controlled, classic, neutral, very subdued, classy vibe. It's not in your face, Parisian, you know, like the, like the runways. They're not, that's not how they dress. And moving on to the different kinds of transportation that you're going to take. We've already talked about the Metro a little bit, but buses, taxis, and trains. Um, first of all, on the trains, the thing, the thing we've learned, and I, I never, I'm still not ever not having a heart attack when I get on the train. I'm always super stressed because they were like farm people, <laughs> quiet, small town. And I love trains. I love traveling by train, but the, the whole way that it works is so sudden. Like you, you get to the track and you're looking for the train and, um, your train isn't showing and it only shows a few minutes or the certain minutes before it actually comes in and takes off. But once it gets there and you, you need to know where it is and get on it. And it, they come in, they come in, the doors open, you get on, the doors close and they leave. You don't have a lot of time to be like, is this our train? I don't know. We never know what's going on when we're on tra 
just at this point, our, th our goal is just to get ourselves on the train and figure it out after we get on because we can never find our seats and, and you're done with luggage. So again, light luggage. But um, so snap, snap, when you're dealing with trains, keep it up. Like we saw somebody that a train came in, we're going out to Versailles or somewhere out and um, the train came in and stopped and it was a double deck and we were upstairs. Train comes in, stops, doors open, people get on, people get off, doors close and a lady sitting near us went, oh, that was my stop. I don't know how her day went after that, but so pay attention on the trains. Don't, don't be lax. And on buses, the thing we learned with the buses, again, not, I'm not a bus person. I have no idea how these work. The first time we got on a bus, like ever, we went out to Malmaison and we took the bus and we just got on the bus that says it stops at Malmaison. Well, I didn't know that you have to know the route. Like on trains, it's usually on the Metro. It has the little route with the stops and you can kind of see where you're going. The bus that we were on didn't have that. I don't think there was the, at the bus stop, there was the map and you could see all the stops. And I didn't realize that I needed to know not only our stop, but the stop ahead of our stop or the stops coming up to it. Cause you, you like push a button or something to let the bus know that it you need to get off at the next stop. I didn't know that. And we probably would have been parking the bus with the driver at the end of his shift, except that I kind of realized it in time to be like, oh no, we need to know where we're supposed to get off, not just he'll stop at every stop because he wasn't. So I had to tiptoe up and actually tap on his shoulder and be like, I'm so sorry in French. Like we're trying to get to the Chateau de Malmaison. Can you help? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I got you. You know, he kind of made eye contact with me and when it was time for us to get off, he's like, this is you. But I, we didn't know that. So be aware on the buses, you need to have some knowledge of the route and the stops, which is just probably bonehead simple, but there it is. And as a newbie, we didn't know it. And it was a mistake we almost made. <laughs> we caught it mid mid mistake, a mistake is in progress. So we caught that. And uh, to do with taxis as well, major thing to not do when you arrive and you're new and you might be jet lagged and tired getting off the plane you've just got to paris you maybe didn't sleep all night on the plane when you get down coming out of the airport um you get through customs and you want to get a ride into town there's trains you can take we haven't done although i know it's not hard to do um all, mostly just because we're tired and we didn't want to figure it out so we're just like get a taxi pay the thing go in first of all be aware that there are fixed prices for taxis into the city so do not um, agree to pay more than whatever that fixed price is it, it's usually about five dollars within five dollars of each other for left bank or right bank of the city but the main thing when you hit the taxi area just ignore all the guys that are going to be right as you like a, we call it the gauntlet but the the group of guys that are all like hey taxi you need a ride you need a thing like just ignore them and walk past them and look for the signs that say taxis and go outside through the taxi door to the taxi stand where there is an official taxi stand and they someone will be there you need a taxi yes here's one right here and you get and they have the official taxi you know like a g7 or a paris taxi they are a taxi official taxi do not get in the ones where they're like you need a taxi and there's some dude down the road with his car his brother-in-law's car and no way to take anything but cash and i'm sorry but the price is maybe 200 euros but that's what it is don't don't get in an unmarked car like there's all, and, and I've heard, I have an experience that I haven't heard Uber is not a good idea as well as much in Paris for, for like safety, even a little bit of safety reasons. I haven't experienced that, but taxis even don't, don't do the thing where they are not an official in any, in any area, but especially from the airport in, get, get in the official taxi stand line and get an official taxi who will have set prices to go to where you're going and an actual meter that you can see and his, you know, the ID and the whole thing. So just be aware of that. And coming back out to the airport, we always get a taxi out to the airport because I just, I don't want to deal with the trains and possible stops and possible this, possible that, just get a taxi. But the prices are, they have a fixed rate. Um, the other thing with, with moving around in the city and especially if it's your first time and everything seems so amazing and there's all these tourist places to, start to see and I've heard this from a lot of people who actually live there because you need to remember the people that you're seeing on the street and on the metros, if they are residents, they're just trying to live their life. They're trying to get to work. They're trying to get their kids. They're trying to get to the store and tourists are kind of underfoot. <laughs> and so, and the, the ones we've met, they've all been very nice and very polite, but you can imagine in that touristy of a place that we probably get on their nerves. I know they get on my nerves when tourists are in our area. <laughs> so I can't imagine the volume there. But the thing to please, please, from everyone's point of view, don't do, and this is with everywhere, but especially here in Paris, um, 
you see a site, you want to stop and take a picture, don't just slam on the brakes in the middle of the sidewalk and get out your camera or gawk into a little gaggle of let's stand in the middle of the sidewalk and decide where we're going or where do you want to eat or what do we do next? Just move that over, like merge off. We're merging, merge yourself over to a quiet piece of the sidewalk where you don't slam on the brakes and everyone behind you just walked up the back of your shoe like, oh, we're stopping. Be, have some awareness of your situational awareness of what's going on, get out of the way and then be over there and do whatever it is you're gonna do with your with your planning, but don't just back up this, the whole and sink with anywhere, museums, sidewalks, all of it. Just get out of the way and do your little conversation, whatever needs to happen, do it out of the way move aside because that I mean everyone will thank you including other tourists and the other thing it kind of ties into that and and ties into not being a target if you are mapping like we have we're always doing google maps on my phone and but but not being a target part of that is not walking along map map look look map map look get the next few steps in your head and get to the side and get your phone out if you need to and quietly take a peek at your map but don't stop in the middle of the thing and be like I don't what street you're going to be a target for people to that are opportunists to come up and French people, nice, normal, regular French people will not approach you on the street to say, hey, do you need help? You can ask them for help and they'll help you. But if someone sees you acting like that, they're, those are the people that are going to target you and they will come and ask, hey, are you lost? Do you need help? I can show you. I can help you. Don't. Those are the people you don't want in your space. <laughs> so don't make it obvious that you might be lost or you might be a tourist or you might not know what street you're on. Just act cool. Even I, we had times like this where we were like, we're so lost. We have no idea. We need to stop stop walking. We need to figure this out. But don't make it obvious. Stay cool. <laughs> like, look bored. Get over to the side. You know, and same thing with, with the monuments. Uh, to not look touristy. If you're dressed where you're blending in and you're walking past the Eiffel Tower for the first time, don't walk along. Oh, my God. Just my my thing is look bored. Like, look like a lo the locals are bored with it, amazingly. But they are. It's It's been there a minute. They're used to it. They're walking by, they're on their way to work. Be that person, walk by, like, yeah, walk in. And then get to a bench, sit down, and then be like, wow, we're here, Eiffel Tower, but don't stop in the middle of the sidewalk, take a picture. And for the love of everything, mistakes to not make, don't go out into the street and take selfies in front. I see, we saw people doing this um, at the Arc de Triomphe, standing in the middle of that, like, walk. let's walk right out into this revolving, circle of 12 lanes of traffic in a roundabout of insanity which is hilarious to watch but there was there was tourists in the mix walking out pretty far out and taking selfies and taking pictures like oh, i can't please don't do that mistake don't do that and tying into the touristy stuff um let's move into hotels restaurants etc um first of all don't insist on a hotel i mean we always do we get an airbnb so we always have a kitchen and we cook in so we save money so we can come back more often so don't don't think you have to stay at a hotel and tied to that is don't think you have to stay at a hotel or a bnb with a view of the eiffel tower like you can walk to that stuff get a decent you know a nice neighborhood or somewhere where you're comfortable but it doesn't have to be five-star hotel with a view of the eiffel tower unless you have that kind of money then by all means spend it i'd rather come back more times <laughs> and um and then into restaurants um quietness is the thing and and don't make the mistake here that we always we Americans are loud in restaurants. You'll notice it there. The whole restaurant is much more quiet. People are more privacy. There's a privacy bubble around the table and their their voices are for themselves at the table, but they aren't loud. No one is loud enough that you're like, wow, I'm listening to your conversation about your, you know, Hewlett Packard job or your Samsung this or your whatever. I don't need to hear about it. And you won't probably hear about it in Paris at the restaurants because they have a a quieter tone so keep the voices down and for the love stay off the phones and the loud i don't know why our voices go up when we're on the phone you're, you're in a regular place and then it's like hey what or talking into it like it's a microphone don't just rude mistake don't do it and you will you will see the rude parisian stereotype if you do that there some of them will actually call you out and be like Shh, can you not do that like don't talk on the phone on the metro don't talk on the phone on the train and if you must then keep it very quiet and brief and don't 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 always think you need to eat out as well like we always get a kitchen and we cook in and then we have again you have more money that you can come back and see the place with 
And if you are doing restaurants, don't assume that you need to tip because they have a whole different system there. The waiters are making a living wage. They aren't working for tips. You don't need to tip them unless you really like this. The tip is included. So you don't need to tip them unless you felt they did provide an excellent service above and beyond the tip they're already getting in the price of the food that you're buying. And, and don't make the mistake of expecting American style waiters and waitresses to be, you know, show up with the funny hat and drawing pictures on your table. Hey, I'm Ashley, what are we doing tonight? What's everybody having? What are we drinking? Are you having any plans for the weekend? That is not the waiter you will see in Paris. And they will seem subdued to the point of like taciturn, but they're just doing their job. They're bringing you your food and then they're gonna leave you in peace to eat it for as long as you wanna stay, you have that table. But don't expect them to keep pot. I'm, I love it, actually. I, I've had we've learned to slow that down and expect no interaction, which is different because we're like, where are they? Our water's there. We need this. We need that. They don't keep coming by and asking you how you're doing, which I like because they usually come by right when I have just taken a big bite of steak. Like, how's everything tasting? And you're like, bye. You know. So don't. They do. They leave you alone. And if you want something, they're. The ones we have interacted with, they're very aware of what's going on in the room. So if you need something, we've had really good luck. I don't know if other people haven't, but all you have to do is kind of, you know, just like get their attention and they're, and they're like, yep, and they'll come over and, you know, help you with whatever it is that you need. And the, the other mistake with that is don't, don't do the American thing of like, can I get the salad, but get this on the side? And can I substitute the chicken for this? And can I substitute and can I add and can I just don't. The menu is the menu especially there it, it feels like that's very don't do it and don't obviously ice the ice cube thing we, we're big on ice cubes and the french are not if you want ice they may or may not look at you like you're crazy and butter on the bread i don't know what that is about but if you want butter ask for it because you're not you're gonna just get bread i'm like i don't butter if you guys have milk do bring butter <laughs> sorry that's not even that's not that's my mistake i should ask for butter and the other mistake to not make, unless you want to have rude Parisians, and they will be probably rude, do not make the mistake of entering anywhere, a store, a restaurant, even if you're just popping into like, we're just looking, we're not shopping. You walk into any establishment where there is someone there, you always, 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 every single time say, bonjour, bonjour madame, bonjour monsieur. Acknowledge them or you will not get friendly treatment. And when you leave, even if you didn't buy anything, Au revoir, merci, you know, like say hello and goodbye. You are coming to them. You're coming into their space and you need to acknowledge them. And it, and you don't, don't just walk in. Don't say anything and be like, do you have this? Like, just, we need to be aware of that very different cultural thing. And they're probably not going to follow you through the store. Hey, what are you buying? What do you need? Can I help you find something? I did, did it. They're probably not going to do that. So if you love that, you might not see that as much there. So that is one mistake. That's probably the biggest mistake that everyone will always point out. Always at least say bonjour, au revoir, merci for everything they bring you. S'il vous plaît, is pl say please, please, you know, everything, please, thank you, goodbye, hello. Just bring up the polite a lot in Paris and you probably won't find that they're rude. We have not, we have yet to run into the typical, um, stereotypical rude Parisian. Everyone was so nice. If you try to speak start a conversation in French, like you always hear this, that they, you you know, started in French and my French is decent, but it's not perfect at all. And then if we, and we always end up being able to communicate. And sometimes I'll ask them if they speak English. And like most people say, they're the French. And even my tutor used to tell me this, that the French are very perfectionist about their own language skills. And so they are going to be more, um, or inclined to not want to speak English because they're afraid they're not as good. So just kind of find out which one you can communicate better in and practice on each other. But the ones that I met were so sweet and they were very kind about my accent and they helped, they helped us. No one was rude, but you, because you offer them that level of politeness to start with. The other thing, and this kind of ties to restaurants, um, the mistake to make is do not make the mistake of walking by a bathroom if there is one anywhere. There are not many bathrooms. This was one of our biggest things we ran into our first trip, second trip, any trip. Where are the bathrooms? I don't know what the deal is, but there's not many bathrooms. Don't, if you see one, use it. Don't expect it to be clean, unfortunately, on every level. Um, don't expect paper sometimes, even in a restaurant bathroom. Don't expect everything to work and um and bring some cash bring some small euros because the bathrooms that are worth using will often cost you 
a euro or two to get in. And then they're clean because there's someone working there and keeping track of them. But the main thing is, um, if and if you can't find one on the street and they aren't just on the street and you can't just pop into a store and be like, hey, can I use your bathroom? They're going to be like, we don't have one. So if you have to, stop at a cafe and get, get a coffee and then there will be a restroom there. But um, we had some serious touristy problems with not finding bathrooms and when you need to find a bathroom it's kind of all you can think about so just don't walk by them if you see one it's think of it like a special little gold mine and go use it because you probably won't find one again and bring some uh, kleenexes or something because we we ran into more than one that didn't have any paper like <laughs> okay and no water either no sink no towel just kind of be be, be ready for that um one of the last things, and this kind of ties back to the uh, don't overdo your day. <laughs> I would say the very first thing we learned that was a mistake and we did make it was we landed in Paris and we spent a day relaxing and kind of catching up from jet lag. And then the very next day, our first day on the ground in France at all, we'd never been to Europe ever, no idea what we're doing. We decided it would be a good idea to go out to Versailles that day. So we were figuring out the navigating the, the system of metros and trains and then Versailles itself and then getting back and I think I bought us the wrong tickets I mean so it's it was a lot or for and a lot of walking to start the vacation off with like 15 miles of walking outside in that amazing we just did the gardens we didn't even do the inside also don't do Versailles in two do it in two days <laughs> I would so not recommend doing trying to do do Versailles in one day like do the inside one day do the outside another day or like we did we just did the outside and we literally came back on a whole nother trip a, a couple of years later and did the interior. But the first day on the ground, uh, we wore our feet just about to nubs walking around our first day in France, plus just the navigation and the language barrier and all of it, it was a lot. So um, probably don't do Versailles on your first day on the ground. I hope these helped you. Um, some of the mistakes that we have obviously made and some of them that we kind of navigated around or caught the mid stride and fixed them and um, add this to the, the bucket of all the other things not to do but for the for the most part just plan to enjoy the trip don't don't over stress it don't overthink it and don't stress about it once you get there everything that you there's like there's not a mistake you can make that can't be fixed except don't be rude that you can't fix if you don't start off on the right foot with your interactions you kind of can't go back and fix that you can check out our itinerary videos right here and we have our paris playlist with everything we've done in paris right here we're always adding to it we will be going back to paris in april of 2024 so stay tuned for more adventures and more things to probably not do um i hope this helped you and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching